All right, everybody, Paul Stetson with Weeks Aircraft, Mechanics Corner, restoration of the BF-108. Uh, we're on a road trip today. We're off to Space Coast Plating in Melbourne, Florida. Uh, we talked about the chrome trim on the project, and uh, we have to take the stuff over there, so about a two-hour drive, and we're going to talk to the people there and see what we can do as far as getting all this stuff plated. So come along with me, and we have a little fun uh, road trip day. We're about halfway. St. Cloud, I guess. Actually, I've seen some parts of Florida I've never seen before. I had to stop for a snack, of course, a donut. And my favorite beverage, chocolate milk. That's the best part about a road trip, is eating along the way. All right, here we are at our destination, Base Coast Plating. And uh, let's see if uh, what they can do for us. All right, here we are at Space Coast, talking to Terry. And Terry's going to take care of our, our plating needs. He's going to measure all this. We're going to do a little inventory of everything. How long has Space Coast been in business? Since 1996. 1996. And uh, you guys, this is the place. I've, I talked to three different people, and they said this is the place to come to get chrome plating. 44. <laughs> uh, that's good. <laughs> That's how we, we advertise, word of mouth. Yeah, all right. Now you get some free advertisement here on YouTube. So we're looking at all the parts. we got them all spread out here. I've taken some measurements to kind of give us a quote on all this stuff. You mind if I just kind of walk around a little bit and just do a little yeah, bit of no, video? No problem. You can go check it out. Okay, thanks. I'm going to be doing some voiceovers on some of this because the shop was uh, extremely loud and noisy. So. Uh, we have to apologize for that. Uh, this is the part of the shop with the all the tanks that hold all the chemicals for the process. I'm not exactly sure of the entire process of chrome plating. I know it's um, has to be copper plated, then nickel, and then chrome. But of course, the parts go through a whole process of going through dip tanks to be cleaned of stripped of old material. And of course, this is a really nasty process. I've been to a couple other plating shops that do CAD plating and stuff in it. This is, looks the same. It's not some place I think I'd ever want to work because I think it's a very hazardous environment. In fact, the gentleman spoke about uh, EPA comes by uh, quite often to check on everything. Um, but you see the different types of tanks here that are used to clean the parts. And uh, as they dip everything and get it ready for all the plating that they do. And then after this, there's a little side room back in the corner I think we're going to show here in a little bit it's actually a bigger place than I thought it was going to be there we go I'm going to this corner room this corner room is actually like a little prep room for prepping some parts but mainly it was used for polishing out because once everything goes through the process every single part has to be polished by hand and that's what these guys are doing which is uh, I can imagine very interesting work but they're doing some pieces here, like a lot of automotive parts, a lot of classic car parts. Um, up here on the bench here, I think you'll see some some old Chevy parts. I recognize here some of that chrome stuff. There's a little Chevy bow tie emblem there and a few other things. But I think probably 90% of their business is, is automotive. But uh, lots of labor. Uh, it's very similar to restoring uh, an airplane in general. It's just there's a lot of hands-on labor that takes place with this type of work. And you can see... The same thing here. Of course, another thing they do is uh, is copper plating and uh, some beautiful, beautiful copper plating. I'm not sure what these were off of. Um, they also do some marine and boat work. Some of this stuff look like uh, marine. Some of it look like uh, instrument pieces. But you can see the nice work that they do there. And then, like we mentioned, uh, automotive work. There's tons and tons of car bumpers uh, all over the place. The car McGee bumper, MGB. That's one of my favorite cars, actually. What else we got there? Ah, Vante. What's that there? No, it's just tons. Of, it looks like they got years and years of work there, actually. 66 Ford Fairlane. Just all piled up here. 65 Comet. So you can see they're, they're pretty busy um, with all the chrome plating that they do with this particular shop. Some more stuff, old 442. 
be cool to actually hang around there and watch the whole process of them doing one part like a bumper. It would be neat to watch, but it probably takes quite a while. You probably have to spend a couple days there. <laughs> And uh, as you can see, the shop, it looks like our shop. It's a mess, <laughs> which is actually, I think, a good sign of a good shop. If it's too organized, you're not getting anything done. Uh, so. And of course, a lot of these parts are rusted when they show up, so they have to go through the same process that we deal with as far as bead blasting and sand blasting. They have a separate area for that, a little bead blast cabinet that they knock all the rust off everything. Some more prep area. Uh, it's tank strip tanks for removing paint and old plating. I'm assuming that's what that is. Yeah, it'll burn you, man. Yeah. So it looks like a looks like a messy job. That's for sure. Yep, and there we go. Finished product coming out. Look at that. Looks like some motorcycle exhaust there or something. As you can see, some beautiful finished pieces there. Possibly it'd be a few pits here and there because it's uh, pretty rough. But yeah, it's pretty I mean, rough. We, we, here we are back, and they're doing the final inventory. He's looking at some of these parts. He's concerned a little bit about the pitting on some of these pieces, but he thinks he can save uh, those pieces and actually fill in some of the pitting areas and get them to look brand new. So hopefully he's come back to us. And, of course, they're going to inventory some of these, all the little hardware that has to be finished up here. And any idea on, on time? Uh, you guys are how, how backed up are you guys? Uh, what's your time frame? On? What kind of time do you have? I have I'm in no hurry at all. Okay, <laughs> How's that? I would say that? four to six weeks. Four to six weeks. Yes. I thought that's quicker than I thought it was going to be. be. A little quicker. I was going to say, you know, yeah. probably because you got it takes so long to work that thin stuff. Yeah. Um, it's probably be a little. I would think all this thin. little stuff takes a lot of time. It uh, it it's just as it. It adds up. How many people are employed here? Uh, 18. Because most of your work, uh, antique car stuff? Or antique uh, cars and uh, motorcycles. Motorcycles mainly, and, yeah. And uh, boat. boat and uh, airplane. Yeah. yeah, I saw on your website you did airplane stuff, so yeah. I was happy to see that. Uh, everything just got to be old, old school metal, you know, or aluminum or something. Yeah, yeah. Metal. And chrome plating is the only thing you do. You don't do anything else. You don't we do any. Do, uh, copper, nickel, and chrome plating. Unless you do nickel also. No yeah. CAD though. No CAD. Okay. No okay. So nickel. Keep you in mind for nickel. We have some stuff that needs nickel plated. So that's about it. We'll have to come back and check out the finished product here in a couple of months and uh, see what it all looks like. We're all done at Space Coast, uh, inventoried everything. Um, and uh, they're telling us about eight weeks. I figured it was gonna take at least that long. I thought it was gonna be longer than that, actually. Uh, and uh, as, I th as I thought it was gonna be, uh, expensive. Uh, but that's kind of part of this whole thing. Uh, it's. Uh, about three thousand eight hundred dollars to have all this stuff plated. There's a lot of labor involved in this, uh, so but that's the cost of doing restoration. And so now it's uh, it's actually almost lunchtime. One of my favorite things to do when I'm on the road is look for a local mom and pop restaurant, and apparently it's called the Little Restaurant. Uh, so we're gonna head over there and get some lunch before we head back to the shop. All right, here we are on the that little restaurant have ourselves some yummy lunch. Um, a lot of people when they are on the road they're always stopping at fast food, McDonald's, Burger King. But I always try to find that mom and pop place that usually has a really good lunch and I think this is it. So let's go have some lunch. Alright, lunch is over and uh the people at the plating shop were right. This was a really good place for lunch. Had the uh, egg salad sandwich and actually one of the best pieces of pie I've had in a long time. It's hard to find good pie on the road. It was a strawberry rhubarb pie. It was homemade. It was excellent. So all filled up. Successful mission. Got the plating uh, going. And now we're going to head back to the shop. Finish out the day. <laughs> All 
Alrighty, how are you are? Made it back to the shop. Uh, thanks for coming along on this road trip. And uh, stay tuned uh, for some other episodes for the 108. I'm sure there's going to be some other road trips we're going to be going on here. We've got to deal with the uh, seats going to the upholster. Also, have to have the little uh, window blinds made. I think I have to go visit that lady who's going to make that for us, too. So uh, stick around and keep watching uh, for more updates.